Good morning, beloveds. Good morning. Good morning. Do you love that term? I love that term. It's such a deep feeling for me. Because when I say that, I don't say it with <coughs> anything less than total sincerity. Because I've learned to be more present with my life more of the time. And therefore, I don't falsely declare hello, <coughs> beloveds. There's a difference in, in, in how we approach our lives. Um, this morning, my lesson is titled, The High. This whole month has been about expressing the balance and the nature and the beauty of, of life. And so every week has been another <coughs> chapter in our evolution towards this day of the high. So I begin with a quote by Joseph Campbell. Listen to this. Suddenly, you're ripped into being alive. And life is pain, and life is suffering, and life is horror. But my God, you're alive, and it's spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> it's spectacular. And I, and his words to me this morning resonate with such insight and, and such uh, an expression that the idea to be alive is to feel, is to feel this life, not insulate and diminish our lives through other means. And it's to experience it in all of its process. And to realize that, yes, this life has a spectacular nature about it. I call it the high. And we've all been high. Right? Right. Yes. <coughs> I'm not, I don't want to see details. I'll just know that we've all had this sense of inner high. I, in the high time of the 1960s, that's when I was morphing into adulthood. I think I still am, but I hope so. Well, that's a period that saw a lot of changes, didn't it? It's a great amount of personal expression as a society, and we had, uh, it was a time of peace, mm -hmm. this kind of this peace, mm -hmm. even though there seemed to be a lot of non-peace going on with the Vietnam War. Uh, there were love ins. What was that? Love in. I can call that a love in today, here. But then it was a love in out there, mm -hmm. in all sorts of forms and fashions and functions. There were love songs. My favorite, because I was years old, mm -hmm. the Beatles. The British invasion was coming to the United States. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other one, you can't buy me love, mm -hmm. but you could try. <laughs> and don't we try? We do try. Buy ourselves love, buy somebody else love. Uh, we think love is buying something. And then there's another one. <laughs> Everybody must get stoned. Remember that song? You don't. Look it up. There's, <laughs> Google it. <laughs> There's the Rolling Stones, you know, and, and so it's all of this idea that this cultural evolution, revolution, that was happening then, and it was pretty, pretty, pretty uh, tumultuous, I would say. But what I, why I mention that today is because we go through that in our own lives. Maybe every day, a little bit. There's tumult, a tumultuous part of us. There's a, there's a gurgling, a changing, a, an inner action that um, uh, tries to express out. Um, 
And it's, it's our inner, our inner self, our inner knowing, needing to evolve. You know, change is, is the only constant. And I, I've said before, maybe last week, I said, you know, change, change happens while we're, and life happens. But I use change. Change happens while we're making other plans, many times. What we say we we're planning for doesn't always happen the way we planned it. Anybody else? Yeah. I, yeah. And there's, but there's, there's this yearning for change inside. There's this... Uh, sort of recognition of, of uh, something in the midst of our inner evolution that's going on all the time. It's a rush up. It's a calling to. It's a drawing with. And I believe this inner aspect is our inner evolution of the divine needing to be expressed. It's our nature, our divine nature, our divine companionship. Not separate from us, but it's that inner aspect that reenacts who we are if we let it come through us. But it has to come through us to be us, to be authentic. I can't do your life. I can't do... I'd love to be able to sing. Mm -hmm. I don't do anything like play the piano. Mm -hmm. I do chopsticks. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I'm two-handed with a little bit of cording, but hey. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate all of that aspect, but that's not me. It's not me. So I, I honor more of the time who I am, and therefore I can honor who you are, because I don't compare as much as I used to. I didn't say I never compare. Knows that. But, I, but, but there's less of a getting stuck in the comparison. Many of us have said, and I know I've said this, there are certain moments in my life I have felt the oneness of God and experienced inner feelings of euphoria, a sort of spiritual high. And I talked with people in classwork here at the center who said, you know, I, I had this moment where I was just so in the oneness. And I want that again. I explained it to this person, this student. I said, now, <laughs> back in the 60s, there was a, when the other, when the, 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 the drug kind of induced high, I have a, a close acquaintance who chose cocaine. And that first rush is why he kept coming back. It was never that good. I'm glad he told me that. <laughs> I've never had the urge to do that. This is truth. And so I... But what I know about spirit is it's a rush that keeps on giving. <laughs> and we can be in it more of the time the more we call upon that part of ourselves that says, here I am. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere. We can dull it. We can inebriate it. We can drug it. We can busy it. And we could push it away from us. Excuse me, push it away from us. But it's always with us, as us. The only thing it requires is recognition. The spectacular <laughs> sense of who we are is a oneness felt. It's a oneness that we feel. So this morning, I offer a prescription for us. A spiritual medication, <clears throat> if you will. <laughs> that forever maintains our high. It's four letters. We've said it many times this morning. Love. It's love. And I've created an acronym. You know how we like acronyms here. Because it helps me to remember, and hopefully you as well. L. Live 
in harmony. O, operate as if. V, value. And E, express with enthusiasm. So to live in harmony, the L of love, live in harmony with your spiritual nature. And what I know about that is what is true for you is true for you. It may not be what you see in the world, or it may. But what's true for you, the spiritual truth, is not what's many times showing up in the world. And it was brought up today with the experiences in Santa Barbara and some of those types of things. We wonder, well, how, where does that come from? How does that come about? Why, you know, why do we even have this? Because people are, we in consciousness, we as a collective consciousness, there's a little fear going on. And so it tends to show up in the world. And so we know more, more peace and harmony and love for us, beginning with us, and that's what we put in our world around us. And how much better is your own family when you express more love? Then A, smack, smack. There's a different result. Well, some Italians get it. <laughs> so in the Science of Mind textbook, our, our founder, Dr. Holmes, he writes uh, on the uh, chapter, Principles of Successful Living. Man does not exist for the purpose of making an impression upon his environment. He does exist to express himself in and through his environment. There is a great difference. Man does not exist to leave a lasting impression upon his environment. Not at all. Not at all. It is not necessary that we leave any impression. Whoa. It is not necessary, if we should pass on tonight, that anyone should remember that we have ever lived. All that means anything is that while we live, we live. And when, wherever we go from here, that we shall keep on living. So living, living. You know, change happens all around us, doesn't it? It does. And the key is to be in harmony with it, with the change. Dr. Carolyn spoke two weeks ago. Ain't it great? Change happens. Ain't it great? Lost my job. Ain't it great? Got a raise. Got ain't it great? Sign off key. Ain't it great? <laughs> Whatever. But to be in harmony with it sets up more harmony in your life. On Thursday, uh, a group of travelers head for New Orleans. Next Saturday would have been Louis, Reverend Louis' 75th birthday. He wanted to go to New Orleans for his birthday. So we're taking a little bit of that spirit with us. Now, that's a change. <laughs> that was a change. But the change I'm going to talk about is the travelers. The people I thought definitely were going, some were not. Some I thought, like my own younger sister, who said she couldn't come, she's coming. I was like, oh, 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 okay, change is happening. And it all happened in the last 10 days. And so my, my reason for saying this is because I, have, I was pretty proud of myself for going from the... What? To the, oh, okay. This is the perfect. Don't know how or why yet. I'll know later. But I'm moving into this with a little bit of, um, a, a, lot, a lot of harmony, a lot of openness. But, but so change happens. And so we get a chance to move into it to see, to see, the, and this is the high of my expectation already. Wow. How are these dynamics going to play out? The O in love. Operate 
as if. What does this mean, operate as if? Put on the mantle of the idea, of the belief, of the expectation you want. You want to be healthy. You want a better body. Simple. Don't eat the donut. Eat the apple. <laughs> Don't sit in your chair and go play with your Wii or whatever, you, you know. Get up and walk. Go on the block. I mean, it's little things that set up our intention, that validate our intention. See, every intention needs a little bit of validation, I believe. Act as if. Act as if. Move into the mindset, the consciousness of whatever it is you say you want. You want to learn music. You've got to take a lesson, or you have a parent or two that knows how already, and they can teach you, or whatever. But you move into that, and you, but you have to take action. Focus on your goals and your visions and your desires that you want to live. You know, there, there are times in my life when I didn't pay attention to, to those things. And you know what? <laughs> it didn't come out as I expected. <laughs> they don't. They don't. You know? And one thing is, well, like dust bunnies at home, it's a simple thing. But, you know, I can overlook those until they're just rolling down the hallways. <laughs> Prioritize. Ernest Holmes tells us, it's in the uh, chapter on the indivisible whole, W-H-O-L-E. We should never hesitate to say that we know the truth, because we do. For the realization of the unity of God and man is the truth. We simply need a greater realization of, of this idea. Well, how are we to get it? Only by penetrating deeper and yet deeper into our own divine nature. Pushing further and further back into the infinite. Question, where are we to do this? His answer, there is no place except within that we can do it. No place. I can assist you in knowing for you I can offer some tools and some forms and some, some different practices, but you have to do it. We each have to do it. We have to take action and work out what's going on inside. V, value. St. Webster offered eight definitions. I chose number six, B. Does it fit? <laughs> Value. The relation of one part in a picture to another with respect to lightness and darkness. Hmm. Lightness or darkness. How do we see our light? Do we see it dark? Gray? Sometimes. But we want, we say we want, we, 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 we are taught to believe we want, and I want more light. I don't want that muddled up stuff necessarily in my life. And so what importance do we give to those different aspects as they show up? Do we get caught up in the darkness? I have. Not, not as often anymore, but, but I have. And if so, they tend to keep us from our high, our high knowing, our, our sense of aliveness. Do we allow those, those uh, periods where there's a little pothole in our road of, of life that, that, that we just keep going there? <laughs> or do we choose some other, other path, some other idea? I used a lot of Ernest today because I loved Ernest. He just fits so he just fits so well in my lesson today. So um, I have another Ernest for the V for value. And he writes, a true estimate of real values cannot be built on the shifting sands of time alone. In the long run, the merciful will obtain mercy. 
in the long run, we shall reap as we have sown. So it's whatever we choose to move to and through and on that is a gives us our result in our life. And so whatever result we have, probably we should say thank you because it moves out of that darkness into the lightness idea. Gratitude lifts up. Shame, blame, and other stuff keeps us stuck down low. E, express. <laughs> e. <laughs> With enthusiasm. See Diana. I mean, everyone who came in the door today, there was this high level of enthusiasm. I felt. Did you feel it? Yeah. Yes. When I met you, there was this like, woohoo, I'm glad to be here. What's that about? Spirit going yippee. It's going yippee. I'm going to be with my, my spiritual kids with the playground of mind. And we get to come in and experience here, don't we? Because Ernest tells us there's an urge to express in all people. And this urge operating through the channels of creative mind loses energy into action and compels the individual to do something. Hello? Back of all this desire is the impulse of spirit to express. In us, you and I, this impulse must express at the level of our consciousness. So, beloveds, suddenly, you're ripped into being alive. <laughs> and life is pain, life is suffering, and life is horror. But my God, you're alive and it is spectacular. It is spectacular. <laughs> and the next time you hear, hey, let's get high, you can know, I am high. I was born this way. Because we're all spirit. And we come in love. So it is. So, would the ushers please come forward?